Hi everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of Becky S Investigates. I'm Becky S, and I have questions. I'm a 36 year old mother, tattoo artist, and conspiracy queen. I love puzzles, and I love all conspiracies, from 9-11, JFK, aliens, giants, free energy, everything. But all of that relies on hearsay. Objection. Hearsay calls for hearsay. The theory that I've been excruciatingly dissecting over the last two years is Tartaria and the Mudford theory. The theory is exciting to me. You can go out into your local town and look at the buildings, poke the bricks, and ask, does what I'm seeing match the official narrative? In the first part of this episode, I will be explaining what the theory is, what evidence has been found around the world, and what features I'll be looking for when investigating my local town of Burnley. Before we get started, I'd like to give a quick shout out to my friends at Rise Above Live, who over the last two years have given all of us crazy people a place to get together, make progress and dive down those rabbit holes. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'll leave the links in the description for Rise Above Live. Thanks guys. There are also a load of YouTubers that I've been watching on this subject over the last couple of years. There's Autodidactic, Tartarian Truthers, John Levi, Conspiracy R Us. Thank you for all of your hard work. Um, I'll link the channels in the description below as well. Finally, I'd like to thank Roger Frost. He is one of Burnley's leading historians and I managed to meet him um, before I set out on this journey. And it could have been the end before I'd even begun. I explained the theory to him and he was very interested and he's the reason why I'm doing this right now. So thank you, Roger. And also he gave me the last book that was never officially published and it was the last copy all about Burnley's buildings. And I look forward to using that in my research for this project. So let's get into it. As Max Egan quite rightly states, if we don't know where we've come from, how do we know where we're going? We're taught that we're at the peak of human civilization. But walk down any town centre and you will see that we are not the peak of human civilization. We are taught that what we have now is the best we've ever had. And that leads us not to hope for more. We're taught that humans are a total warring species, that we've always been barbaric and brutal, and that we always destroy anything that we create. There's clear evidence worldwide of high technology free energy and absolutely astounding artwork. There's so many mysteries and forgotten technologies, but how did we forget? The theory is that there was a previous possible worldwide civilization that had the knowledge of free energy, frequency healing and unbelievable creativity up until around 200 years ago. There are so many maps of Tartaria. It covers most of Europe, South, North and South America, even Australia. This shows that it was all part of the same culture. The question is, were these people wiped out by some form of world war or cataclysm, something? that happened that destroyed all of the amazing architecture around the world and covered it in between six and 12 foot of mud. I'm gonna show you some pictures from around the world now to evidence this theory that something happened, something big and something that has been wiped from our history books.
There are so many theories of how this could have happened, but the one thing that is clear by all of these photos and the evidence that all of the researchers have found is that something happened and it has been removed from the history books. All over the world we're hearing stories about Victorian streets being uncovered, um, Roman mosaics buried under six foot of mud. I'm not sure about you, but if I had a Roman mosaic outside my front garden, I'd probably give it a sweep every now and again. Not just let six foot of mud bury, uh, bury it. Like You'd give it a sweep and a mop, wouldn't you? <laughs> this event would have been massive. Such an achievement to recover from, to rebuild from such a massive cataclysm or war or disaster, whatever it was that caused it. Why has it been removed? Humans love to brag. We also love any excuse for a party. So why is there no Memorial Day? Why is there no, let's celebrate the rebuild day. Let's have a few drinks in the street. It's tinfoil crown time. <laughs> time to think, time to speculate on how they would have done all of this. Now, if you had inherited some land that had amazing instructions on it, how would you, how would you get rid of the last civilization? How would you cover it all up? Now, they had to ensure that the real story would not be discovered. The men who were trusted to inherit these buildings, to be credited with the construction, they all had to be part of a trusted group. Now, were those trusted groups that found some free masonry part of a club and is that why most of these buildings don't say that they were built or constructed on they were say they would say that they were founded is that mean found dead now once the buildings were restored or dug out how would you convince thousands of people of the new narrative that seems impossible that's exactly what I thought until I dug deeper into what was going on around the world at that time They repopulated the new world with children in around 1880. They taught them whatever history they wanted. If you look up the orphan trains and foundling homes, 300,000 children were sent from east to west across the United States. They even held rat raffles for these children to buy them as farm hands and for other forms of child labour. They just found them wandering around. What happened to their parents? Then we have the absolutely palatial buildings that were used as insane asylums. We are led to believe that these structures were built at a time when populations were still relatively low. So why did they have such amazing architecture? And why were there so many rooms? The list of reasons you could be taken away to an asylum is extensive and some of them are ridiculous but could this have been a cover up to take away anyone who did not comply with the new narrative? Could the old world have been run on the lunar, lunar cycle? Is this why these people were labelled as lunatics? Also around this time is the so-called Industrial Revolution, a time when great leaps were made in technology and industry. Or was it? The US Patent Office was formed in 1836, around the same time as the theory suggests that the destruction of the old world happened. Was this the moment that all of the shared ideas and inventions that made civilization peaceful and prosperous were stolen and the elites took ownership of them all? 
Much like everyone knows that the iPhone is several generations ahead of what gets released and the military and governments of technology that us minions could only dream of, could they have taken away the technology only to release it bit by bit as their own inventions? Now the world's fairs is a huge topic so I'll just give a brief overview of this fairy tale for now. The first era of the World's Fair was the industrialisation era between 1851 and 1938. Since 1850 is the proposed date of the last reset, it seems very convenient that these vast, sprawling, city-like fairs were constructed in a matter of a couple of years, only to be mostly torn down with massive financial losses after the fair was over. Many of the buildings that remained after the fairs were subsequently burned down in great fires that conveniently struck these amazing buildings. If you look into the stories, the actual official narratives of most of these fires, there's a lot of fishy tales going on with those. The fairs that firstly survived the demolition, and then the fires, were then targets during the wars. Dresden being the prime example that pops into my head here. There's a lot of evidence to suggest that these world's fairs were mass re-education events, with study books handed out to the participants. As you can see here, there's the notebook, and it's even got the subject and the instructor with all the space for notes on there as well. There's also some strange exhibits, such as the incubator babies. And we can see all these photos here are all from the babies that were shown in incubators at the World's Fairs and a lot of them seem to have been for sale. If you're interested to know more about the World's Fairs, I absolutely urge you to get this book. Uh, it's by Howdy Makowski, see that? Exposing the Expositions. It's got so much detail about all of the World's Fairs and it is absolutely fantastic. I totally recommend it. So what exactly am I going to be looking for during this series? Well, the first feature of these buildings is a lot of them are constructed from red brick, even though many of them have had new facades. The second thing to look out for is windows down and steps up. I'm going to show you a few pictures now of so-called Greco-Roman architecture from around the world. These are all in different countries, different cities, different cultures, and they all match. We're told it's Greco-Roman, but is it? And am I going to find any of these buildings in my little town of Burnley? Now, this is Burnley. This is where the Palace Theatre once stood and you can actually see where one of the levels at the front goes under the road. There's a, quite a few photos that I've got here. A lot of these buildings have now been demolished. This one in particular hasn't been and is one of my favourites. Do you remember what I said earlier about windows down? This picture of the Burnley Greengrocer really caught my eye because this is in 1896. So why are the windows at the bottom buried? And this beauty was demolished. 
it was on Tommerdon Road in Burnley and if you match it up with the pictures that I showed you earlier from around the world it could be anywhere and this was another one Brunswick Street Chapel and demolished in 1963 look at that absolutely amazing but again we can see we've got stairs up and windows down and this one is the Burnley Union Workhouse Infirmary 1904 this has also been demolished but if you look at those windows and the stairs up windows down I wish that building was still there I hope you can see why I find Burnley so interesting when I when I started looking into this theory. I see those buildings every single day. So I hope that sparked your interest into mud floods, Tartaria, all the lost technology. And I want you to go out into your local town and see if you can find anything with windows down, stairs up and get back to me. Leave me a comment, like, share, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Catch you later, mother flutters.